This video is on how to forgive the church. If you're like me, you've probably been very hurt by the church. And by the church, I mean people within the church, whether it's a bishop or a priest or a group or just somebody in the church has hurt you. And I myself have been hurt by the church a lot. And in a minute, I'm going to share some of my experiences and the bitterness that I harbored and the resentment I felt and how I came to find forgiveness and healing. But I would like to start out by saying that if you've been hurt by the church, if you've been hurt by someone in the church, then I want to apologize to you personally on behalf of the church. I'm sorry that those people hurt you. I'm sorry that you had to experience things, that you had to experience pain, you had to endure trials or many other things. I apologize on behalf of the church. And I pray that you too can find it in your heart to forgive the church and to find peace and healing in your own life. Before I tell you my experiences, let me just briefly say what I mean by the church. The church is both divine and human. And that's an important distinction because the church was started by Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church was started by Jesus Christ. And the Catholic Church, therefore, has a perfect divine element to it. But it also has a human side, which we all know is very broken, very hurt, and very imperfect. There are a lot of people in the Catholic Church who are emotionally broken, who are prideful, cocky, holier than thou, and even poisonous, toxic, and evil. St. Paul talks about how there will be evil in the church, even in the leadership. He talks about wolves in sheep's clothing. I've had a lot of experience working in the church and working in many churches, and so often people who work for the church can be toxic. They can be petty, judgmental, argumentative, controlling, rude, mean-spirited, clicky, and just downright nasty. And I apologize to anyone who's experienced that, and I've experienced it myself a lot. These kind of people hurt others and even push them away. We're supposed to be representatives of Christ and reflect Christ and his love and his joy and his peace and his goodness. And the reality is that in a lot of people's lives, so many times we reflect the opposite. How is it that we call a Catholic church and some of the secretaries are the nastiest people you've ever talked to? They're rude, they're mean, and they just don't seem to have a kind bone in their body. I know for me, when I was growing up, and a lot of people have left the church over this, I had what were known as the mean nuns. These were the religious sisters who were called the mean nuns. They were the ones who would hit you with rulers on your knuckles if you got out of line. They were the ones who would hit you with the chalkboard pointers on your hands until it hurt. And I experienced this myself. I experienced people not having their desks clean enough. And so one poor girl who had food in her desk, the nun literally came and picked up the desk, turned it upside down, and dumped it out. And all over the classroom floor was everything she had, books, rulers, paper, pens, everything. And she yelled at the girl and told her to clean it up. And she threw the desk on the floor. She said, if you don't clean this up, I'm going to throw all of this stuff in the trash. And this nun was so mean. And that was my experience of many of the sisters that I knew growing up in Catholic school. Now, of course, many of them were super loving and very Christ-like and super sweet, but many others were not. You wonder how they could pray and follow Christ and still have that hardness of heart. Like so many people we know of Christ, we go through the motions, but either we have issues that we've never dealt with, which make us really nasty people, or we ourselves have not experienced or encountered Christ. We know of him and we pray to him, but we don't actually know him because he has not transformed our hearts. On that note, I know of a priest who was above me when I was a director of religious education. He was the boss put in charge of me. I had the largest religious education program in the state. We had 1,200 families and I had about 75 to 100 teachers. And in seventh grade, we learned the creed. And I made the kids learn the creed and memorize it every year. And they were so proud to be able to learn the creed. One day, this priest who's in my opinion, sanity is so-so. He used to come in and just pick arguments all the time with me. And he would just say, the kids have to know the creed. Why? I don't even know the creed. From this moment forth, they don't need to know the creed and that's final. And then he would just get up and walk out. 
No discussion, a lot of anger, a lot of unchristlike attitude, and it would just leave negativity and bitterness and really behind to anyone that he touched. And I had to remind myself day after day after day of this priest just almost verbally abusing me every day, coming in saying, why do you get paid so much? I already spoke with the head priest and I am working on getting you to have half a pay because you shouldn't be being paid this much. And I said to the priest, I should be paid more than this. Not only am I running the largest religious education program in the state, but I also started the first successful youth group ever at this parish, which is another full-time job. So I'm actually doing two full-time jobs and I should be being paid more than that. And you want to cut my salary in half. And so he went to the priest anyways, nonetheless. And thankfully the other priest didn't agree, but this is the type of person that he was. Nasty. I mean, when you look at him, the last thing you think of is Jesus. The last thing you think of is kindness and compassion. And unfortunately, this is representative of so many people in the church who are themselves are so hurting, broken, angry, probably abused themselves at some point in their life, and they have never successfully dealt with it, and they hurt and push others around. They lash out at everyone around them. It's no wonder many people leave the church. If I wasn't such a good Catholic, and if I didn't know that Jesus started the Catholic church, and it's his church, not this priest's church, not those nuns' church, it's Jesus' church— I may have left a long time ago, but it's Jesus's church, not the nuns, and not that priest. Speaking of which, speaking of just broken people in general, I remember a, a priest who was so insecure about himself, he used to put everyone else down, especially me, because he was over me in the youth ministry program that I worked at. And every time I made a mistake, it was like you had to be perfect. You couldn't make mistakes, and he would chide me up and down. And sometimes he would just look at me up and down, and he'd be like... He would literally be the most disapproving person in the world. Now, most people could handle that, but I'm also a broken person as well. And many people in my life treated me that way. They belittled me. They put me down. So when people start talking to me that way, I get sometimes angry or I get frustrated with them. So in some scenarios, I've told the priest or I've told the person who's hurt me and they said, oh, I didn't realize I was doing that. I didn't realize I spoke to you that way. And it was so much better after that. But other times, like so many of us, we harbor bitterness, we harbor resentment, and we don't speak how we feel until it comes out in an unhealthy way. And that's what happened to me with this priest. And when he looked me up and down, he was like, I can't believe you. Like, you're the worst person in the world. Like, you don't do anything right. I literally freaked out on him. And I said, how dare you speak to me that way? I don't care the fact that you're a priest. If you're a priest, you should be talking like Jesus, not the devil. And I'm sick and tired of you belittling me. And I'm sick and tired of you putting me down. I'm sick and tired of your stupid insecurities getting in the way of your priesthood. And I went off on him in a way that I should not have gone off on him. I should have communed it well beforehand, and I didn't. And that was my brokenness and my failure and something that I've had to work on over the years to get to a much better place. So even if people do that in my life, I don't react that way. And eventually me and the priest patched it up, but he, his mouth was like, I couldn't believe I was speaking to him that way. And upon reflecting on it, I can't believe I spoke to him that way either. But that was my brokenness. How many people have I hurt in the church? How many people have I pushed away? I can blame all these other people who have hurt me, but how many people realistically have I hurt in my life? One more story, and I have many stories. I remember I worked at this high school here in Connecticut, and it was toxic, poisonous, and I couldn't sense Christ almost anywhere in the school. The headmaster himself, when you looked at him, you did not see Jesus. You saw the opposite. I mean, many times I've seen movies or played video games in the past where, you know, certain bosses are just very stern. They sit in these big chairs, and they scowl down at you, and they're really evil people in the games because they're the bad guys. And it's sad to say that this headmaster who ran the entire Entire school. He wasn't a priest, but he was a brother, and he was so evil. I, I hate to use that word, but that's what it seemed like to me. He was angry. He was destructive and toxic to everyone around him, and he poisoned everyone around him, and he hurt everyone around him, including me. He said a lot of nasty things, did a lot of nasty things, and so did other people at this school. And so over the years, I have just had one thing upon another upon another where I didn't do anything wrong, and yet I have had these injustices done to me. Now, sometimes I have done things wrong, and I deserve what I get, but at other times, they were just injustices from people who really didn't reflect. Christ. And I've been very angry. And when I think about it, and when I talk about it, when I start venting about the problems of the church, these situations come to mind about how bad the church is. The Catholic church is this, the Catholic church is that. This is what we've become. 
and I become angry and I become emotional. I become all these things. And thankfully, lately, God has given me a grace to look at the situations the way he does, to see the situations and view them the way he does. And he's given me a singular grace to be able to forgive each and every one of these people who have directly hurt me, lied to me, abused me, and many other things. And he's given me the grace to forgive them and be at peace, to find healing in this. And that is why I am making this video, because so many of us are struggling inside. So many of us have this anger. We have this bitterness, this resentment, and we won't forgive. And really, it's eating us alive. It's eating me alive. Well, not anymore, but it was because someone once said famously that unforgiveness is like drinking poison, but expecting someone else to die. Think about that. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison, but expecting someone else to die. So in other words, I'm angry, I'm bitter, I'm like, Ugh, these people really get me mad. And we seethe and we brood under the surface and we just rage about our injustices and all of these different things. And half the time, most of the time, these other people have already moved on with their life. They don't even know we're angry. They don't even know what's going on. We think they do just because we will them to, but really it's in us. And we are silently killing ourselves. We're hurting ourselves. We're destroying ourselves. So what forgiveness is and what forgiveness is not is that it's not saying what they did was okay. Those things that these people did to me and the things that happened to you in your life, they are not okay and they're wrong. And those people have to answer to God on judgment day. And they may answer severely for what they did. We are not by forgiving them saying that what they did was okay. But what we are saying is that we are going to be the bigger person. From our end, we are going to choose to let go. We are going to choose to be the bigger person and just to say, I forgive you. Even though you really hurt me, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to release it. I'm going to let it go Ooh, and find healing in the process because we hold on to it so tight. And we have so much anger. But when you let it go and you actually start praying for that person, things change and you find peace. One wise priest said you can't hate someone that you're praying for. You're either going to pray for them or you're going to hate them but you can't do both. So if you don't mind, let me share just a couple of the things that I've learned from my life in hopes that it'll help you to find forgiveness and peace in yours. And we can look at an earthly level as well, and this will help. This has helped me to forgive because there are people in this life that have hurt me. I know somebody whose parents hurt them very much, and they harbored bitterness against their parents for many, 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 many years. And then their parents over the years started to tell them about their childhood and how they were hurt, how they were abused, how they never had love, how their parents didn't even love them, and how their abuse really made them angry. And they took out that anger on their kids, and now their kids are understanding that their parents didn't even stand a chance in that if we were in our parents' positions and we had those things happen to us, we probably would have done the exact same thing to our children. And when we have these enlightening moments, it makes it much more easy to forgive, to see through the eyes of compassion rather than vengeance, anger, and brokenness. And we can forgive them much easier because we realize they didn't mean it. And most people who hurt us are angry themselves, are hurting themselves. You know the famous maxim that the bullies are the angriest people out there. People who make fun of other people are the most insecure people out there. So the angriest people, the people who hurt you the most, we have to realize they are the most angriest. They are the most hurting. They've had the most things generally happen to them. Everybody in the world is fighting a battle inside. And some people, the angriest people, the people who are always so rude to you, those are the people who don't say it, and they never will because half the time they don't even know, but they're fighting a battle inside themselves and they're losing. They hate their lives. They hate the things that have happened to them. They don't know how to deal with it, and so they lash out at everyone else around them. They hurt people and they push them away. And we need to start having compassion for these people, not saying what they do is right because it's wrong and they're going to have to answer for it. But we need to start looking through the eyes of compassion rather than hate, anger, and vengeance. I mean, look at Jesus. Jesus was the most innocent lamb on the face of the earth. And people hated him. They rejected him. The Pharisees tried to destroy him 
same day after day. And yet, as much as Jesus came into competition with them, and he would combat them because they tried to destroy the truth, and he would stand up for that truth lovingly and fiercely, he also had a heart of compassion like no other. And in fact, in Matthew 23, it says that Jesus wept for the Pharisees. As much as they frustrated him and as much as he had to counteract their errors, he wept for them. His soul longed to see them saved, and they rejected him, and that hurt him to the core. And nonetheless, even after that, he forgave them on the cross. He forgave them. Do you understand that Jesus is our model? Jesus is the one we follow. And if you even claim to be a follower of Jesus, if I claim to be a follower of Jesus, then we must forgive. We must forgive. We must forgive the church. We must forgive the people in the church. I remember a girl came to me and she hated her mom. She was abused by her mom for a lot of her life. She said, I will never forgive my mom ever. And I went up to this girl and I said, you need to talk to your mom. You need to forgive her. You just have to do that. And this girl said, no, never. You have no idea what my mom did to me. So I said, fine, tell me. And we had this long talk and I said, listen, you were wronged and I'm sorry for that. Here's the deal. Here's what I had to do. When I couldn't forgive people, here's what I said. I said, God, you want me to forgive people. I don't. You want me to love them. I can't. So here's the deal, God. If you want me to forgive them, then you need to give me the grace to even want to to forgive them because I don't want to right now, God. And I told this girl, don't worry about forgiving them just yet. Worry about praying for the grace to even want to forgive them. That's the first step. Pray for the grace. Say, God, give me the grace to even want to forgive my mom. And within a week, this girl called me and she said that she had told her mom, she called her out of the blue after a long time of not speaking to her at all and told her how she's hurt her over the years. And she told me about how they cried together, how they wept together, and how the mother apologized profusely for all the time she hurt her daughter and how she was hurt herself and she didn't mean to do that and she was wrong. And these two women have a great relationship today because that's what forgiveness does. Forgiveness often heals wounds that really hurt us and divide us. And when you forgive the church, you will find peace with yourself and you will realize that it's all about your relationship with Christ, not anything in the church that someone else has done to you or against you. And I pray I pray in this video that you can pray for the grace to even want to forgive the church. And I pray for that grace in your life that you will come back to the Catholic Church. You will come back to Jesus because it's Jesus' church. In 1 Corinthians 12, it says Jesus is the head of his church. So you can't leave the church and still have the head. They go together. So please consider that. And please come back to the Catholic Church. We here at Catholic Truth are willing to help you on your journey. We're willing to help you in your journey back to the faith. And if you've been a different religion, if you've been away, maybe you're a pastor of a different religion, there are so many pastors coming back to the Catholic Church. I ask you to check out the Coming Home Network. They help thousands of people of different religions come back to the Catholic Church, and they help them every step of the way. They're wonderful. Here's the deal. Here's the takeaway. Jesus was injured. He was hurt by evil people, and he loved them, and he forgave them. And in the Our Father, Jesus said and taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. So we, if we want to be forgiven by God, need to find it in our heart to forgive others. Because think about it. How many times have you hurt other people in this life? How many people have you hurt? How many people have you pushed away? How many people have you been mean to, gossiped against, lied about, did something rotten to? I mean, we hurt people all the time, and we hope that they will forgive us. I pray that even though you've been hurt, I pray that you will forgive them too. And this is not false forgiveness. And I and I mean there were some people in the church who blame the church for things, even though it's not the church's fault. Some people say, well, the church didn't give me an annulment. The church won't let me remarry. The church won't let me sleep together before marriage and many other things. That's not the church. That's Jesus. Jesus made these commands that people are shooting the church for, that people are shooting the messenger for. The Catholic Church can't change Jesus' teachings. And that's the perfect divine side of things. But the broken human side, we get hurt by that all the time. Don't look at the human side. Look at Christ. I beg you, please consider forgiving the church. 
please pray for me. And as always, we here at Catholic Truth will pray for you. Please like this video. Please share it with somebody who needs it. And here's the question of the day. Have you been hurt by someone in the church? And if you've forgiven, how have you learned to forgive? Or are you still in the process of working on forgiving? Again, please share this video with someone who's been hurt by the church. Help them to learn to forgive the church. Share this information with them. And please, if you haven't already and you love this channel and you love the videos we make, please subscribe to our channel and consider supporting our ministry so we can continue changing lives for Christ. God bless you.